uh, we are very thankful to have one of our customers here with us, um, JR Tapper with uh, Rigid Hitch. They are a distributor of uh, hitches based in uh, Minnesota. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, and uh, JR rose through the ranks uh, from being in IT to becoming the president of the company and it's an inspiring story. Uh, let's hear it from them on how they are managing strategic inflection points and how they are responding to change. Uh, let's uh, put our hands together in welcoming JR on stage. Thank you, JR. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. So JR, first off, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thanks for coming from Minnesota. It's great to have you join us at the DC Cap Summit. Thank you. Yeah. So JR, uh, can you tell us about the Rigid Hitch business? It's a 60-year uh, legacy, which is very, very interesting, and it's very common with respect to distributors. How did you guys get started? Can you share us through the story, and how did you sure. get involved in the business? Sure. Um, so Rigid Hitch was established. Well, Rigid Hitch is a family-owned manufacturer and distributor of trailer hitches and trailer or towing products. Okay, It's a tiny little niche in the automotive world. Uh, it was started in 1957 by an entrepreneur who was selling auto parts out of the back end of his station wagon. He uh, was going around to his customers, and the customer said, hey, what about, can you supply us with uh, trailer hitches? And he said, sure, and he saw an opportunity and started making and designing trailer hitches. Uh, in 1969, the current family who owns the company bought it, um, and we've been going strong ever since. Um, it, we have about 40 employees. Uh, we have sell about uh, 12,000 parts. About 10% we manufacture ourselves. The rest we uh, buy from other manufacturers. Um, in 2010, the company decided to uh, had an opportunity to get into some retail web stuff, um, and they that's when I started. Uh, they brought me in to. Uh, build and you know manage the retail web business. Uh, at that point, there was B2B only, and that's when we started B2C. Uh, and right now, the B2C, or the web side of the business is now 50% of the total. So it was a big change over a relatively short period of time, so. That's amazing, thank you, JR. And yeah, you mentioned that you started in IT. I, I, if I'm right, you started around 2010. And then, being in IT, you kind of grew and became the president of the company. How did that happen? <laughs> well, I've been in IT for a lot longer than 2010. I started in the 90s. Um, and, you know, I always was interested in business as, as business. You know, I've worked in a bunch of different distributors, a bunch of different companies. Um, and I've always been fascinated with the business and specifically how technology supports business. Um, you know, and so I've always been the IT guy, um, and I always, but I always made sure that I was part of the business discussions. Um, you know, I'm not the stereotypical IT guy that says, I'll let the business people handle sales, I'll worry about the plumbing. Um, I wanted to get in there and find out about, you know, how the business was running, how it was working, uh, and what the technology could do to help the business go forward. Um, and doing that, you know, I spent... A lot of time, as an IT guy, you got to spend a lot of time studying IT stuff and keeping your skills up. And over 30 years, we've seen a lot of change. Uh, but I also spent a lot of time reading about business, um, making sure I understood the business ideas that are going on as well. So I started at Rigid Hitch, and I was the IT guy. You know, um, we're building websites, we're making internet sales, and. As the company was growing and doing this thing, it became clear that the uh, president and the, the leaders were going to retire. Um, and by being part of the management group, the ownership was comfortable asking me to, to take over. Um, I was a little surprised, but I uh, you know, was excited about it. I had a couple of years to uh, make the transition. And the, my predecessor was, did a really, very nice job with, with the transition and you know, was very good for us. And then. You know, June this year, we got to the point where it was time for him to retire, and we were all ready. The team was in place, and away we go. So. That's awesome. So you had a great uh, transition plan set, 
and also one thing i learned from this is always be curious and yep just don't do your work try to start expanding boundaries and other opportunities uh, throughout yeah. yeah there was really interesting uh, i saw an article this morning in cio magazine you know <laughs> one of the key attributes for a great it person is curiosity you know and be look outside yourself it guys people you know are in a unique position to actually touch the whole business um so i felt like since i had the opportunity to touch the whole business i had the background for doing this kind of thing awesome so how is the current state of economy or inflation affecting your distribution business at rigidrich it has been a wild ride for the last 3 years um the pandemic was wild for us in the sense that we sold more in 20 and 21 than we'd ever sold before literally the 20 and 21 were our biggest two years ever in history um 2022 is a very different world um we're in sort of disposable income marketplace and so it's dropped dramatically. Uh we spent the time preparing, you know, for uh, you know, paring off as much costs as we could, uh getting looking for more products that we can sell, looking for more markets that we can exploit, but it's been a tough year. Um but we'll get through and we're building things hopefully to be better when yeah it comes back cuz the economy will come back at some time it's just being ready for it when it does yeah it so. will come back yeah cool and uh, you actually offer multiple brands you know it's just not rigidhedge.com you have multiple brands this is a question a lot of distributors have and even when i talk to distributors hey branding is a big part of the strategy should i have multiple brand names or should it all be on the primary brand and should we start selling What are your thoughts and advice on that? Yeah, it's I call it a multi-channel uh strategy that we use because you know, we sell in a lot of different ways. Um and each each channel excuse me ends with a a website. You know, we sell in the marketplaces, Amazon, Walmart, eBay, and they all have websites, you know. All of our websites, whether it's rigidhitch.com or other the uh other retail sites represent channels. Um when we started doing this website stuff in 2010 we've actually inherited a, a whole pile of URLs and websites and we kind of had to pick through the process of saying what what are we going to do um some of the websites were branded some of them were not branded some of them were product line specific you know and we started with a a branded website and that worked pretty well you know and we said all right well let's grab another branded website we ran another branded website and that one worked better and it wasn't clear why and we said huh all right so let's run a non-branded website let's see what happens there and that one didn't work as well um you know and it was really surprising that you know it didn't work cuz these are the things that should work um in the end you know we've been doing this for 10 12 years now what have we learned I don't know, keep trying. You know, you keep you know <laughs> we find out that some of the websites work and some of them work better than we expected. Um and they they're typically branded, but not always. Um you know, Amazon, you mentioned Amazon, not mention it, but they are out <laughs> there. That actually works for us. Why? I don't know. Um we sell against everybody in the world on Amazon, but we're it does a good business for us. do we like amazon no do we wish they didn't exist no yes <laughs> but so what did we learn i don't know we're still learning i think that's the probably the the lesson is keep trying keep learning because that's the way to be successful oh really well said jr uh, you always keep running a lot of experiments so one thing i understand from this is hey just run an experiment see if it works if it works double down and if it doesn't just pull back so what are the different brands you have right now well this rigid hitch um and the rigid hitch website lists all of the products we stock um we have some urls that are branded for the manufacturers that we sell not the products that we sell but other products that uh, we purchase um and they're not technically the brands they're often they're different enough because uh you know it's reese hitches or uh draw tight hitches or blue ox toe bars um We have good relationships with the manufacturers that let us manage those. We have to work with the manufacturers so that, you know, man, eh, they that logo looks too much like our logo. Make sure you change it. And, <laughs> you know, we have those kind of conversations. Um but it's the trick is maintaining those 
uh, relationships with the vendors to make sure they work. And then we have a bunch of websites that are not branded. Gooseneckhitches.com. Uh, gooseneck is a type of hitch. Um, Fifthwheelhitches.com. Those kind of things. Trailerpartsusa.com. Those are the you know sort of generic. And sort of conventional wisdom says, well, that's a very focused website. You should be able to drive keywords directly to that. Turns out those are really difficult. Um, you know, and, and gooseneck hitches is an example. I mean, we see gooseneck hitch on keyword searches all the time. So we say, all right, let's set up a website that's gooseneck hitches. And boy, is that hard to make it work. <laughs> but again, it's a learning experience. So Richard Hitch is an Epicor uh, Profit 21 uh, customer. Yep. And you were on the e-commerce connect or the ECC platform. I vividly remember one of our first conversations where you were heavily invested on the ECC platform. And when you talked to DC Cab, we recommended a completely different approach. We said, hey, we understand that you've invested a lot, and but then you just have to go with DC Cab and take a different route. And um, you, instead of continuing to invest, even though you made heavy investments on the ECC platform, Instead of continuing to invest, you decided to cut your losses and move a completely different direction. I thought that was very inspiring because oftentimes when you invest a lot of money in a platform and if it doesn't work, hey, I just need to put a little more to make it work. Just <laughs> put a little more to make it work. But you were like, hey, it's okay, I invested a lot. What is the rationale behind that decision-making process? Yeah, it was a tough decision. We, uh, you know... In business school, they talk about a thing called sunk cost, and that was one of those things that always stuck with me in, for, out of business school. Um, you know, and that's the theory where once you've spent the money, you really shouldn't be using that expense to influence future decisions. You know, throwing good money after bad is you know the, the way it's often termed. That sounds really great in logical, rational terms, but it's really hard to do emotionally. Um, yeah, we invested a lot of money in ECC. And a lot of time. I mean, we spent two years and, you know, countless hours, and I don't want to talk about how many thousands of dollars, you know, into ECC, and it just didn't work. Um, we got to the, the point, it didn't work for us. Uh, we got to the point of launching the second website, and it wouldn't work the way we needed it to work. Um, the whole point of using Magento was to have, be able to launch these multiple websites and, and do this multi-channel structure. And I was really frustrated at the time, obviously. Um, EC, or Epicor told me how much it would cost to get it up to where we needed it to be and how much time. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, we've already spent all this time and all this effort. Do I you know, double down and keep going or do I you know, look around? And I, and I looked around. I looked at a number of different uh, suppliers. Um, and it became very clear that DC Cap could do what we wanted it to do for a price that made sense. you know. Um, it was still going to take time. It's been about a year, um, well, actually a little over a year to, to get the websites up. But, you know, so I had to go to the boss and I said, all right, here's the deal. Um, we either start over again and spend another chunk of money um, and just kind of throw the other stuff away. And, and fortunately, he was a Smart guy. He is a smart guy. And he realized that it just wasn't going to work. Um, and he's like, yeah, fine. You know, go for it. Which was a weight off my uh, shoulders, but that was another year of, you know, starting them from scratch. And, and uh, But we're much happier. So I, after a year of, year and a half working with DC Cap, now we have five websites when it took us two years to get one website out of DCC. Um, and they're working. And they're working the way we want them to work. It's awesome. Sunk cost is something we learn. And yeah, so thanks for mm -hmm. taking us back to your business school days. <laughs> cool. Um, so what advice would you give for people out there who are looking to get into the distribution industry as a career? Well, send me with a resume. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they, they, I think the biggest thing in any job, in any industry, is to know yourself, first of all. Um, you know, what kind of environment are you looking for? In distribution, there's two very distinct type of distribution companies. There's the really big ones that have, you know, they're very corporate, very structured, very organized, and then there's small ones. Um, and I've always liked the small ones. Um, we, and I continue to run a smaller one. Um, because, you know, in a small one, you, you don't have a lot of, you know, designed 
career paths, but you have a lot of influence regardless. You know, I had I basically had the same title until last year. Um, you know, I was director of IT for 25 years in three different companies. You know, but I I affected the whole company in these little in these little distributors that I work for. Um, you know, but if that's but that's not comfortable for everybody. Um, a lot of people want more structure, more you know, defined tasks, defined pathways. And once you know that, it gets a lot easier. Um, you go to the distributor, go to whoever, and say, "Hey, this is why I want to work for you. This is why it's uh, a good thing." And a good distributor will will take that into account and, and be very comfortable with that. I know, like I said, we have we have people we hire because they walk in the door and they fit, um, not because we have an opening, but we because we have them fit. Absolutely. The theme of this conference is growth, talent, and competition in distribution. So, what advice would you give for other distributors out here and even the ones who will be watching this in terms of growth? You guys have grown, and uh, what advice would you give in terms of growth, talent, and how do you manage competition? And one more question I have on that is. What is what are your views on remote work? On remote work, sure. Yeah, I don't know that I have uh, any great insights uh, because this is a, obviously the biggest question we've got right now. Um, growth is interesting in our world because we grew so, so much over the the pandemic and we've contracted a little bit. We're we're very economic, you know, based on the economy. So growth isn't. I don't feel like I can control it yet. Um, you know, and, and same with competition. I'm still learning on how to manage the competition. And, and we're in an, an inflection point where we're changing the way we uh, compete in the world. So what keeps me up at night is, is talent, right? Um, we talk about it all the time. Uh, it's, it's our biggest challenge every day. Um, I don't know if this is advice, but I can share with what, you know, what we're doing. I mean... We're embracing remote work. Um, five years ago, everybody was on site, no questions asked. In fact, we released a, a customer service employee who was really good, but she had to move out of town. And she said, I'd love to work for you if we can do it remote. We just couldn't do it remote at that time. We just rehired her last week, two weeks ago. Um, you know, she was two days of training, got up to speed, now she's working. Um, you know, and we still can't do remote work for warehouse workers or production workers, but we can, you know, where we can do remote work, we have to do it. Um, we're embracing automation. Um, last, last winter, we, we changed and automated our warehouse processes um, to improve picking, packing, shipping. This winter, we're going to uh, buy another welding robot to improve our... Uh, production automation, just because we can't buy, a, you know, we can't find a welder to do welding. Um, and next year, we'll probably be doing uh, further warehouse automation. And then finally, we're working with local schools. I mean, we, we're, we have to literally pull people out of high school to see if we can find them we, and groom them, if you will, uh, coming out of high school for work in our kind of business. Um, don't know if that's going to work, but that's, that's what we're trying. So embrace change is something uh, we learn here. Thank you, JR, on that. So thank you for being a DC Cap customer. Can you share about your experience working with DC Cap? Yeah, I mean, we uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, well over 20 years I've been building websites. Um, and DC Cap certainly is as good a web builder as anybody. Uh, the uh, talent is solid, better than most. I won't say who better than, but <laughs> um, you know, we were able to really very quickly and efficiently design, build um, five websites to our specs to meet our needs. Um, you know, from scratch, effectively. I mean, we had you know these websites, and we said, well, it kind of has to look like this, um, but they really were built from scratch, um, complete with the integrator, complete with the integration with Prof Twenty One. Um, you know, in is in any projects these sizes there are issues. Um, DC Cap managed to avoid all of the big ones. You know, we weren't out of commission for any time. I mean, some of these websites generate a lot of sales, and that just wasn't going to be okay. Um, we didn't have any of those problems, and the minor problems we get fixed very quickly. I mean, you know, it would be 
hey, this doesn't work or it needs to work a little differently, and then the next day it's fixed. You know, um, so we were very pleased with the whole program, and uh, I think it worked very well. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that, and thank you for being a BC Cap Integrator customer as well. And thanks for using our product. Can you share about your experience using our integration platform and the product? Yeah, I, Integrator is is a very powerful tool. I can see that. I wish I really knew more about it. It's one of those things that it works. It's sort of like uh, you know the electricity or the phone. You just want it to work. Um, so I honestly don't know as much about it as I want to. I want to learn more about it because I see that there's some opportunities to do other things. Um, specifically, I'm looking at uh, third-party logistics providers and can we integrate our business system with the third-party third-party logistics provider um, using Integrator. And I, I believe we can, and we just haven't gotten there yet. So That's actually a goal as well, where once you set the Integrator up, you don't want to touch it. Like you said, electricity is a great analogy, right? So you turn on the switch, it just works. And that's exactly our goal where, hey, we just want it to work seamlessly without bothering the customer. And obviously, you know, you can learn more about it. Right. So thank you, JR. Uh, those are very kind words. I would like to end with this question. Uh, what book are you reading right now? <laughs> so, I, I'm a reader. I read lots of books. Uh, like I said, I read uh, uh, business books and tech books and whatever. Right now I'm reading a book by uh, David McCraney called You're Not So Smart. It's a funny name for a uh, pop psych psychology business or book about you know, your uh, biases and the, the, thing, the tricks your brains play on us uh, to make decisions and how to make better decisions by being aware of your biases. It's a fun book. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out. And yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I just completed Only the Paranoid Survive by Andy Esgro. So it's a great book as well. It's going to have to go on my list. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, please add it. Yeah. So, JR, thank you so much for coming. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And thanks so much for your time. Thanks for flying down for the DC Cap Summit. And uh, thanks for being a DC Cap customer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.